This is exactly right. <laughs> well, that's perfect. I didn't want to ruin it. Oh, no, it was so good. Just <laughs> straight out both nostrils. I think the key to singing is to sound like you're whining mm. about something irritating. Mm. I think that's the way people get the most enjoyment. But also let everyone know how clear your nasal nasal patches it is are <laughs> while you're doing it. You're just like, what's this, that thing where you pour water Fucking in? Fucking neti pot, man. Neti pot, sponsored by neti pot. That's right. Uh, this is the 100th My Favorite Murder mini That's right. You've sent us all of your emails. Yes. Telling us stories about all kinds of shit. I'd like to request... We requested so many weird fucking things. Yes. I'd like to request... I'd like to go back to number one. Yeah. Send us your hometown murders. <laughs> because nobody sends us hometown <laughs> murders anymore. Have you noticed that? Every th- well, because it's this continuing discussion. Yes. So everyone's sending us the follow-up of the follow-up of the Which follow-up. Which I fucking love. It's very fun. But I feel like in each episode, we each need to have a murder. Um, a well, hometown here's, murder. Here's and, the crazy and, thing that happened in my fucking town. Jacob Wetterling, whatever the fuck. Your John Bonet, you know, connection, guys, your cousin, whatever. Yeah. The thing that made you uh, interested in true crime in the right, first place. Right. And sometimes that is, uh, it doesn't have to be yeah. a direct thing, but you can just tell that little story. We want to slice yeah. the life of your um, hometown and what happened in it that yeah. turned you on. Keep sending us that shit in the walls. We love uncle stories. Your uncles are fucking insane. If your uncle's an alien, even better. <laughs> all that shit. Let's yeah. go upstairs. Let's go downstairs. Yeah. We want it all. That's right. I, I always go first. Do you want to go first since it's the 100th? We could start a new tradition. I feel like let's start with 101 because I don't want to ruin this role. <laughs> Run. You're right. What if I this breaks all the juju? Do you and have we're done. a good ending story? Because yes, I don't. I sure okay, do. Okay, then maybe I will go. Do for it. it! Oh my God! Step forward and take your life. I'm so nervous <laughs> right now. I'm scared. <laughs> uh, that one time the FBI swore my grandmother's farm. Yes. Here we go. This hi. is what I'm in it for. <laughs> it's just hi. Great. I spent the last few weeks putting together a family tree for my mom, who is obsessed with genealogy, but can't use a computer to save her life. Good. At least she can admit it. Here's the problem. Computers can't save your life. They can only ruin it. Well, except for those computers that restart your heart oh, when you're right, dying. Oh, right. Or the, the ones you wear around your neck and you press the button. Beep. Life alert! <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up! That incredibly advanced computer can save your life. <laughs> That's right. In doing so, I've been able to find records on my maternal family dating back to the 1500s. What? And even older ones from my pre- paternal grandfather crazy but i was having a hell of a time finding anything about my paternal grandmother i was uh i was to the point that i was convinced she was a criminal when i remembered an interview she did with a local university oh i was delighted listening to my late nan tell stories from her childhood when she casually mentions the time her family's farmhouse was swarmed by the fbi in 1932 yes as she tells it her entire family had gathered on the porch to witness two black cars driving up the lane through a cloud of dust Mm. i can fucking see it in the movie version tall blue sky in the background Mm. with green fields on either side that's right and blowing up that dirt Old driveway. tiny fucking FBI cars. Hardly any windows. It's all the metal, black metal. No air conditioning. Probably. No. Yeah. And the, they have hats on. That's right. Before the cars were fully stopped, all of the agents had jumped out and were shouting. She couldn't understand <laughs> what anyone was saying. All she knew was that her mother and blonde haired, blue eyed baby sister were sobbing. And her brother was screaming, take the diaper off. What? Turns out, one of the town's folks called in a tip claiming that my nan's family were the ones that kidnapped the Lindbergh baby. (laughs) And her brilliant brother was saying to take the diaper off to prove that their sibling was a girl. Yes, for fuck's sake. (laughs) Clearly, the Lindbergh kidnapping was big news if a child in a small Minnesota town knew enough to know that the baby was a boy. Uh, my favorite part about this whole ordeal is that she never told me anything about it, nor did my dad. Apparently, I got my murderino tendencies from my mama, Mackenzie. Yes. That's rad. That's a beautiful, that's a perfect hometown story. Uh-huh. Perfection mm. in all ways. Mm-hmm. And also, I want, 
what a genius uncle or he <laughs> wasn't an uncle whoever the guy that said the boy take the diaper off yeah that's so because in those moments you get all you know yeah you don't panicked do. and dazzled and you don't do show her the vagina <laughs> just get that badge out there <laughs> show her that's essentially what he's saying it is. Oh. prove that shit fine <laughs> i want you to yell it to me one day <laughs> i hope one day in my life take off the diaper georgia <laughs> Take it off and prove who you are. I don't want to. Okay. The subject line of my first uh, email is, be careful that your rehab group isn't a cult. Oh. What's period up period? Um, yes. <laughs> so when I was in high school, like so many of us, I ended up in a drug rehab support <laughs> group. <laughs> Me called, too. Right? Uh, called PDAP, Palmer Drug Abuse Program. Okay. This is where I picked up my smoking habit at 14. Fuck yeah, I've been Good. there. Good. Yeah, right? Good, I thought... I- Oh, God, I thought it was so cool. (laughs) Good. I thought it was so cool. cool. Um, Amongst other annoying habits that took me a while to break. Mm. The main rules of the program were broken down to three Fs. No fixing, no fighting, no fucking. (laughs) We all broke every every (laughs) single rule many times. But with the exception of these rules, we were encouraged to vandalize, smoke underage, stick it to the man, and never sleep. The whole (laughs) idea of PDAP was involved quote unquote enthusiastic sobriety and oh. thus this group created crazy teenagers in the name of sobriety some of the activities involved in functions were siphoning gas out of cars <laughs> early in the morning and setting the cul-de-sac on fire oh my god getting quote unquote wedged which was staying up for over 24 hours to get loopy enough to feel high or get a certain thought quote wedged in your mind oh my god right I was only a part of the program seriously for about two years and then grew the fuck up while I watched a lot of my friends go down a really awkward path and end up weird adults. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago, a friend of mine who was also in PDAP asked if I had watched the documentary The Group Yet. The Group. I don't know why I said it like that. Mm. The Group Yet. And told me I needed to do it immediately. A few minutes in, I realized PDAP and other rehab programs that were similar were made by the same asshole who essentially created these programs all in a similar fashion and they were all 100% cults. Holy shit. I realized that PDAP checked off all the signs of cults and I was definitely in it for a few years. <gasps> Uh, and I'm both ex- so excited to say that I was in a cult and somehow got out safely, <laughs> but also horrified with just a pinch of shame yeah. that I was in it for two years. <laughs> Check your support groups and make sure they're legit. Katie. That's so cr- I totally understand because you think of cults being like, you become this mindless, brainless, can't think for yourself, like do whatever everyone says. But it's like, you don't think of it as being a fucking crazy person and like, go- like going bananas and having fun and shit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If it's, if it's, um, if there's behavior influence, but you're kind right. of enjoying it, then of course you don't think you're in a no. cult. You're just like, I'm sober and I'm trying to have a different kind of life. My, um, my first, like, rehab not rehab like out of rehab going to meetings like uh sort of like aa and stuff yeah they were at my where i went to um hebrew school as a kid <laughs> <laughs> which we couldn't have we, there weren't enough jews in my town so it was actually a sunday school oh so it was like a double weird thing the, did they use it for both that they turned one into a sunday school no they, it was a sunday school the Jews showed up and pretended that there wasn't <laughs> stuff about Jesus on the walls. For Saturday school? For Saturday school. And then the fucking drug addicts and alcoholics showed up. <laughs> on Monday morning. On Monday morning. <laughs> where I, as a 14-year-old, chain smoked out front as well and thought it was super cool. You're just... Every, every main thing in your life happened in that building. That's right. <laughs> layers upon layers. <laughs> um, that, was, some, that was fucking great. It's I, good, right? I, but also, I want to watch true. that so bad. The group yeah. is what that documentary is called. I definitely want to watch it. And also, it's just a good thing to remember. If you are vulnerable or in your, you're in a place where you're asking for help, that's when the real wolves come out. So you, it's a very good message. Don't that, ever ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're going to say? Yep. <laughs> uh, be careful and d- don't trust anybody. Yeah, don't light shit on. So if, if you find yourself in your life siphoning gas, unless it's the fucking end days, which then do it right be careful until the uh grid goes down yes. and we all are basically <laughs> like in the military right. um let's not siphon gas but at, this, at that point there's not gonna cars aren't gonna run on gas anyways never mind let's get off this topic <laughs> because i could talk about it for days okay my dad was being investigated as the green river killer shit hi guys 
When my father was a young, single, and mustached 20-something, Steven, yeah. he was out with a friend one night in Washington State. While at, a, while at a bar, I'm assuming close to the Green River, he struck up a conversation with a hot chick, quote unquote. After a <laughs> while, they decided to go back to her place and continue, dot, 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 stuff my dad shouldn't be talking to me about. <laughs> He proceeds to tell me that after many slight attempts of taking her clothes off, she kept squirming away, but still making out with him. Confused, my dad straight up asks what's going on and if he should leave. The woman gets up and grabs handcuffs. My dad at this point thinks maybe she's into that kind of thing. She proceeds to tell him that she's actually an undercover cop and she's been watching him all night because he fits the profile of the Green River Killer. Oh my God. (laughs) But she made out with him? She made out with him. And then it's also like... Prove it. You just grabbed handcuffs. That doesn't mean you're the fucking cop. Yeah, you'd need the yeah. You need to see a badge, a. But then I also, want, like, the SWAT team coming in and it, shit. I if I was him, I'd be like, but you were letting me cup your boob. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. how long does the does this stakeout go on before well, you call it? Maybe she was had a crush on him. She was into that murderer. She continues to say that she lured him back to her place to see if he was going to try to murder her. So naturally, after seeing he obviously wasn't going to get uh going to murder her, she says he can go. But the bold ass guy that my father is, he just says, well, I mean, I still really like you. So let's keep hanging out. Yes. They end up dating for two months. Yes. <laughs> was she really a cop? Yes. It was real. It was real. Oh. But they were like still into each other. <laughs> right. Then, okay. So that's why she was doing yeah, it. Yeah. She, she was, was like, into it. my boo. I'm going to at least get a fucking minute of this. <laughs> I work so hard. I work so hard. You deserve this, Peggy. <laughs> Peggy, you deserve some me time. You know what? You're you're squirming away because you're thinking of your boss and the right. captain in your head. But how about you give Peggy a little Peggy time? Yeah, Peggy deserves it. <laughs> uh, okay. This is one of my my dad's many extraordinary stories but the best part is that he told this one for the first time three years ago on my mom's birthday at pf chang's yes my mom was pissed she had never <laughs> heard it in their entire 30-year marriage and he decided to tell it now <laughs> Well, she has her appropriately loud reactions. He just chews his sesame chicken, <laughs> giggles, and says, yeah, that guy killed like 80 people. What? That's, a, that's not the right number, but okay. <laughs> I love that on a quiet P.F. Chang summer night with my sweet 65-year-old mother looking her best, my dad had the internal thought of, you know what? Tonight's the night. I gotta tell this fucking story. <laughs> Thanks for entertaining me while I hang chandeliers during my work day. Oh, well. Wow. I didn't realize. Come over in the exactly right studios and hang some chandeliers. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't be a serial killer doppelganger. Kelsey from Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, Kelsey. Hey. Um, I just kind of love that the mom is still, after 30 years, it's still so fresh for her that she's going to fight for her man. She's like sitting at P.F. Chang's fully pissed. You had a fucking history before you met me? I'm sorry. Are you telling me you made out with some girl? What the fuck? You dated someone for two months before you married me for 40 years? That story should have started, started I'm sorry, Diane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Diane and Peggy, then Peggy comes in. Pe- Peggy's their waiter. Then Peggy's like, uh, their their waiter takes off his mask. It's Peggy the she whole time. She arrests him. He is the Green River Killer. <laughs> Turns out this whole time. Turns out there's been a terrible misunderstanding. Ah. <laughs> well, that hasn't been a pay of chains around here. <laughs> It's just a girl sitting alone in her backyard. <laughs> Mm. Wow, that had layers, layers, <laughs> legs and layers. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Goodbye. 
The subject line of this email is, my d- best friend's dad was Mary Vincent's lawyer. <gasps> Holy shit. Come on. Hello, MFM boss ladies, pod producing guru, and plethora of pets. Oh. <laughs> wow. Um, over the long weekend, my best friend came home to visit from New York. We met up in Orange County. Hey. Ha- and Sorry. Ended up- <laughs> Beige apologies all around. <laughs> And ended up having dinner with her parents at one of our favorite spots. I've always known her dad was a badass lawyer, but I've never really asked about his cases because I didn't want to sound too intrusive. While at dinner, he told us that he recently had a meeting to talk about one of his most high-profile cases, a case where a young woman had her arms chopped off. I swear I must have looked like a crazy person in this tiny restaurant when I squealed, oh my God, was it Mary Vincent? (gasps) And indeed, indeed it was. I have chills right now. Right? Her dad went on to tell me that he represented Mary pro bono throughout her case against her attacker and even went with Mary in front of Congress (gasps) advocating for the No Second Chances for Murderers, Rapists, or Child Molesters Act of 1998. Amazing. How fuck? I've never heard of that. I have fucking chills. So I'm like, I'm saying I've never heard of that. And I'm like, did I say it in my story? You might have. Um, That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we returned to their home after dinner, he showed me photos of him and Mary speaking before Congress, and he told me about how Mary used to babysit my best friend and how her sons and my best friend loved to play together as kids. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry. I am still blown away by the fact that I have such a close connection with someone who knows Mary. It shows how small the world is, but it also put, puts things back into perspective that these horrific things happen to real people. And while it's so depressing, it's so important to highlight these awful things so that we can try to prevent them from happening again in the future as a 25 year old angelino i have to thank you both from the bottom of my heart for confirming my love for true crime isn't weird my neuroses are valid and the constant reminder to lock my doors <laughs> all the best taylor taylor such a good email taylor oh, that was amazing yeah that's very cool um, I, if you taylor yeah took a picture of the picture of mary Vin- or i bet Stephen could find one i'd love yeah. to see a picture of mary vincent testifying before congress i would too that's i just the fact that she did that so badass it's so unbelievable incredible. and what a great fucking law that should absolutely always be passed yes fuck you murderers <laughs> rapists and child <laughs> molesters no unless you're one of those three things oh um, no that's it's a very special hundredth episode um <laughs> here to tell you about clean. my past <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh my god is that it or do you have one more i have have one one more more. you have one more okay well great (laughs) (laughs) let's do it then okay this one's creepy uh my stereotypically creepy uncle Mm. this one a lot of uncles lately uncles all around telling you they're fucking creeps sorry uncle michael and uncle gene i honestly believe we solicited for uncle stories i think you're right Then that makes sense. <laughs> We're still amazed by Why the response. Why does everyone keep writing us about murder? God. God, this is so weird. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and cats that can't understand me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the youngest in my family, so I was always babied. Whenever something dramatic with my family went down, I was uh, it, it was always talked about in whispers, so I have only found out about certain things now that I'm in my 30s. My brother recently told me something highly disturbing about my uncle Mike. He said that one summer in the mid-90s, while he was helping him pack to move out of his house after a messy divorce and cocaine addiction, Mm, Fun. That'll do it to you. Yeah. Our uncle Mike ran out to pick up pizza. My brother stayed behind by himself and continued packing. He came across a large trunk that was extremely heavy. Mm. He was curious, of course, so he popped it open. It was filled with a broom with VHS tapes. He said there had to be at least 100. Oh. They were all unlabeled and he couldn't resist seeing what this was about. It's My, like you're just asking. Yeah, you're, this is, yep. You want it. You want to know bad news. Yeah. Uh, he put the top one into the VHS player and hit play. He was dumbfounded when the image of this on the screen was the inside of a toilet. Looking outward toward the user of said toilet. Yep, a toilet cam. My Uncle Mike had a camera in the toilet of his house for years, apparently. I wouldn't call myself super tech savvy. I still have no idea how he pulled this off, but I have no doubt that he did. He was a highly paid defense attorney in our city and had his home remodeled and customized many times. I can only imagine what kind of creepy ass wiring system he had going on in there. I can only expect that his three daughters and son are on it. All guests, and of course me. Needless to say, I never answer my uncle's calls, even when one year he left a very sad voicemail around Christmas bemoaning the fact that he doesn't have much family left. Oh, 
It's true, we don't. Much of our immediate family has passed, including my mother, his sister. I moved two states away about 10 years ago, and I have learned enough about life to accept that being related by blood isn't an obligation to keep toxic people in your life, especially when they have recorded fucking footage of you peeing. That's hell fucking right on. That's amazing. SSUGM and check every toilet before you do your biz, Mary. And it's super creepy and awful, but I do like that some people, like my father killed someone and it, it's this thing of like that's a, that doesn't define you not that's in the least not about you at all no. it doesn't make you a bad person or it's yeah the relation isn't a connection yeah and you way. can cut people out of your lives that are toxic i'm just interested did, did that guy just shut that thing and then they were like we just can't talk to that uncle anymore it sounds like it because it doesn't sound like he went they went to the police it doesn't i mean sound you like wouldn't it. know what to do i'm yeah. sure it's so awful it's so crazy Ooh, well, I'll lighten it up. <laughs> Would you please? That's why I was like, do you have something lights to hand <laughs> yes. This is good. Um, the subject line is politically correct job uh, job title for garbage man. Hello, MFM clan. <laughs> okay, so my dad has been a garbage man for almost 40 years. He some years ago said that his job title had job title had officially changed uh he is no longer a garbage man he goes on to say in a booming but fancy voice i am now an energy resource recovery field representative <laughs> oh i said laughing that's a mouthful can i just refer to you as a garbage man and he smiles and goes yeah honey we don't give a shit what you call us just don't forget us during the holidays oh over the years, uh, he's been asked many times by the local police to salvage garbage <gasps> retrieved at certain addresses, one of which was the home of a boy that my teenage at the time sister hung out with. We don't know what they were searching for, and we were never told, but he didn't want her hang- hanging out with that boy anymore. What? I want to know! Right? Thanks for all this wonderful... Uh, thanks for all this wonderful podcast. Stay sexy, don't get murdered. Oh, and garbage men like cash, gift cards, and booze duct taped to their garbage can. <gasps> Can't wait to see you in Minneapolis. Minneapolis and May take care Candace. Oh, I love it. It's That's so good to know. It's, yes, you're you please remember if you are in the position to give gifts at Christmas, your mail person and your garbage man deserve gifts more than anybody. As someone who lives in an apartment building and it's like you just you never see them and you don't know if you have regular them all the time like it's the same person every time yeah. you still do that yeah i've never done it um i it same here because it, it's a different mailman every time okay. but one time i just opened the door and handed her a bottle of booze the one i see the most <laughs> oh, may, okay that makes sense they you know what i mean it just like it's not like you have to have a personal relationship or whatever yeah. but you it's nice for the people that kind of haul ass around for your benefit sure if you have the ability to give them a tip it's nice i've never tipped my i'm not saying that yeah yeah, yeah. uh I've never p- tipped the garbage man. I've never even thought of it. No, me neither. That's so smart. Like, I'd be like, how do you do it? You fucking duct tape it to the goddamn <laughs> trash can. You get a bottle of Jack Daniels. That's right. Tuck t- tape it to the top of the garbage can and then stand in your front window and watch it. And, and make sure, sure your <laughs> local teens don't fucking steal it and you get arrested That's for right. providing teens with fucking alcohol <laughs> with their party bottle mm. um all right that's it yeah send us your emails uh my favorite murder at gmail thank you for listening to a hundred fucking episodes thank you for providing the content yes. of a hundred fucking episodes we love doing many love it we love telling your stories thank you for playing along with us yeah and stay sexy and don't get murdered goodbye, goodbye. elvis one cookie ah.